Hey guys, it's Ms. Morgan and we're going to talk about allowance for doubtful accounts. Now first I want you to look at my account balances over here. Service revenue has a balance of $700. That means that this year we have um, provided services and we have earned $700. Now in the balance sheet accounts, we have cash of $450 and accounts receivable of $250. So, as you look at the asset accounts here, we have a cash account for $450 and then we have accounts receivable for Smith, accounts receivable for Jones, and accounts receivable for Morgan because we have three different customers that all owe us money and that adds up to $250. Well, it's at the end of the year and we need to adjust for or plan for uncollectible accounts. Now that's just part of business. Sometimes when you sell on account, you allow customers to charge things, then you might not get paid. And so we are allowed to take an expense called bad debt expense to recognize an expense based on industry averages and so here, I'm just going to use 5%. So at the end of the year, we determined that 5% of revenue will be uncollectible. So we would take $700 of revenue times 5% is $35. And we will create a new allowance account and record bad debt expense for that $35. So we have a new expense account here called bad debt expense, which we would debit for $35 that expense will show up on the income statement and remember the formula for the income statement is revenues minus expenses equal net income. Then our credit in that journal entry will be to a new account called allowance for doubtful accounts. And we can't credit any of these particular customers because we don't know who's not going to pay us. We just know that the average is 5% will not pay. So we create what we call a bucket account. And this is $35 just put into a general account here called Allowance for Doubtful Accounts. This type of account is called a contra asset. And a contra asset has a normal credit balance because it goes against the asset accounts receivable. So now on the balance sheet, we'll have accounts receivable less your allowance for doubtful accounts, and I'm just gonna put allow for DA here. Allowance for doubtful accounts is $35. So we'll say 250, it's gonna look like this now, 250 minus 200, I mean minus 35, so let me do the formula, 250 minus $35 is going to be 215 is the amount we expect to collect, and that actually is called the net realizable value, or NRV, of accounts receivable, and that means that our total assets at the end of the year on our balance sheet would be $665. Now this is just a small example of these two accounts. Realize that a normal income statement would have much more on it than just one revenue account and one expense account and a balance sheet would also have your liabilities and equity accounts. I'm just showing you the accounts that would be affected by this particular transaction. Hope this helps.